listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. What and where exactly is the people's neighborhood? East Williamsburg is a name for the area in the northwestern portion of Brooklyn, New York City. East Williamsburg consists roughly of what was the third district of the village of Williamsburg and what is now called the East Williamsburg In Place Industrial Park, bounded by the neighborhoods of Northside and Southside Williamsburg and to the west of Greenpoint. In the 18th century, Bushwick was already an established town and the waterfront area that provided service to the island of Manhattan was simply known as Bushwick Shore. The land of scrub bush that stood between Bushwick Shore and the town of Bushwick was known as Cripple Bush. During the Revolutionary War occupation of the area by the British, the land was cleared with the wood of the thickets being used for fuel. In 1800, Richard M. Woodhull purchased a waterfront property and laid out a settlement naming it Williamsburg after his friend and surveyor, Colonel Jonathan Williams. Williamsburg was incorporated as a village in 1827 as part of the town of Bushwick and included 26 streets running from east to west and 12 streets east of the shoreline running north to south. Based on data from the 2010 United States Census, the population of East Williamsburg was 34,158, an increase of 2,280, or 7.2%, from the 31,878 residents counted previously in the year 2000. Covering an area of 895.74 acres, the neighborhood had a population density of 38.1 habitants per acre. Greenpoint is the northernmost neighborhood in the New York City borough of Brooklyn. It's bordered on the southwest by Williamsburg at Bushwick Inlet Park and McCarran Park, on the southeast by the Brooklyn Queens Expressway in East Williamsburg, on the north by Newtown Creek in the neighborhood of Long Island City and Queens, and on the west by the East River. The neighborhood has a large Polish immigrant and Polish American community, containing many Polish restaurants, markets, and businesses, and is thus referred to as Little Poland. Originally farmland, many of the farm owners' family names, such as Messerol or Callier, are current street names. The residential core of Greenpoint was built on parcels divided, after all, during the Industrial Revolution and East-West, while the northern and eastern section, along with the Newtown Creek through East Williamsburg, became an industrial maritime area. Greenpoint has long held the reputation of being a working class and immigrant neighborhood, and it initially attracted families and workers with its abundance of factory jobs, heavy industry and manufacturing, shipbuilding, and longshoremen or dock work. Now that we know where the people's neighborhood is, why is it called that exactly? Well, during the late 50s through the 70s, the city was looking to get rid of low and middle income neighborhoods and make way for large industries and other building projects the city wanted to develop. This project was called Plan Shrinkage. The city starts by cutting vital services to these neighborhoods, such as sanitation, police, and fire protection, just like they did in Harlem and the South Bronx. It's much easier for the neighborhoods to burn than to simply buy people out. In addition to being bulldozed out, many people were burned out by the closing of six fire companies in the north side Greenpoint area since 1959. In that year, engine company 213 was closed. The Noble Street Marine Company was closed in 1962. In 1968, Squad 7 was closed. Engine company 215 was closed in 1972. And three years later, the 36th Battalion was closed. In 1975, the city announced the closing of Engine Company 212. The Northsiders knew that if Engine Company 212 closed, it could mean the end of the neighborhood. More than half of the Northsiders are senior citizens, one of the groups most likely to be killed or injured in fires. I told him I was going to dance with him yesterday. They didn't have to travel far to see the end result of planned shrinkage. Bushwick, a neighboring community, was prosperous until fire protection was cut just a few years ago. Since then, whole blocks of Bushwick have been destroyed by fire. So when the city attempted to close Engine Company 212, the Northsiders decided to do something about it. We just stayed, stood up in front of the engine, and we said, no, no, you don't go. No, no, you don't go. And we did not permit the fire engine from moving out of that place. We blocked it off because we felt that the minute they moved that out, it would never come back. 300 angry residents blocked the engine company in its quarters and held the firemen hostage. 
After 24 hours, the firemen were released, but the community people had taken over the firehouse. They were determined not to leave until the city met their demand to reopen Engine Company 212. And then from that night on, until uh, we got to reopen, people were manning it 24 hours a day, living in there, sleeping in there. How, how did you live in there? I think I lived there, I don't know how many Nine, months. Ten months for us, uh, oh, yeah. You were there until about May or June. Once inside the firehouse, the first step was to figure out a plan of action. Neighbors who had hardly spoken to each other before found themselves sitting face to face. They knew that as individuals, they didn't have a chance. But together, they were a force the city couldn't ignore. And when the police came, they, you know, they jumped in and they says, you gotta get out, you gotta get out. And this there, uh, the battalion chief of the 11th Division, uh, Joe Galvin, he came down, you know, because he was notified, he shot down. And he came in and he says, what's happening? So we said, we're taking over the fire. So, he, so the cop says, what do you want us to do? Throw these civilians out? So he said, no. He says, leave them here. It's, it's the people's firehouse. And that's what we got today. The people's firehouse began having weekly meetings on Tuesday nights called action committee meetings. These were open to anyone who wanted to help reopen engine company 212. Let's go over these companies' history, shall we, and find out how and why the people of Greenpoint fought so hard in 1975 to save Engine Company 212 from being closed that year. It started with the closure of Engine Company 213, located at 137 Power Street, on December 1st of 1959. Engine 213 was organized on September 15th of 1869 as part of what was then known as the Brooklyn Fire Department. On January 28th of 1898, it became part of the FDNY as Engine Company 13, and then it became Engine Company 113 in October of 1899. Finally, it transitioned over to Engine Company 213 on New Year's Day, 1913. Okay guys, we're at our next stop, stop here at Engine 213 in the People's Neighborhood. And this was a, a company they closed. And uh, Jimmy, tell us a little about this. Sure, Kev. Uh, this company was organized as a volunteer fire company in September 15th, 1869, as Engine Company 13. Uh, in 1880, uh, uh, reprogrammed again as an, another unit. Uh, I believe it fell under the Brooklyn Fire Department at that time. Okay, and um, January 28th of 1898, the FDNY took over Engine 13, and it became Engine 113. Uh, it was changed to engine 213 January 1 of 1913 uh, and was disbanded December 1st of 1859. So this was founded in 1869, the same year engine 212, which we were at earlier. So it was the same time frame. Right. Okay, but this was closed in uh, 1959, which is, you know, 20 years before the People's Firehouse was, uh, yep. or, or there about 15, 20 years. Right. Yeah, I, I found uh, something on the internet about it. This is actually a buff who used to buff in this firehouse. He said as a kid, he would come here uh, and eat lunch with the guys. Um, he said uh, they, don't, they, they don't do a lot of running, but they get some pretty good workers, and they did do a lot of relocating. So that was probably because they weren't getting a whole lot of first to work, but the work they got was, was pretty good, I guess, for the area. Uh, even across the street, you got most of the buildings were built in the early 1900s, so all wood frames, so they probably just, you know, had some pretty good work. Uh, for a while, it was me, after we closed down, the, uh, I guess, New York, the meter maids were using this as a, a location to, you know, to come out of, and now supposedly the NYPD has it and they use it for record storage. Um, Doesn't look like the building was touched much since. Uh no. since it was built. Well, the original pictures we have with, uh, over the four windows up here were arched, designed for the exterior of the building. There were some other uh, architectural uh, changes made to it. It looks like they just stuccoed the, the building uh, eventually. And this is what we're looking at now, but the original pictures were a little bit, a little bit more ornate architecture. It had a big round window, right? Probably yeah. like a skylight yeah, or a uh, Right at the top of the peak there. Same, and, same roof. And it is fairly deep, which probably because of the stables back in the day, you know, for uh, with the horse drawings. Yeah, yeah. You know, there, there were no motorized pumps back then. We had uh, horse and carriage. You know. 
don't think we're gonna, we rang the bell. I don't think we're gonna get in this one. Like I said, locked up tight, PD Records. So. But yet an, a, a, another engine company in that same neighborhood that was closed down. So um, again, gave more credence to that whole people's firehouse. That's why uh, they episode. fought so hard to keep it open. Correct. We still, we keep going back to the people's firehouse. So these companies that were disbanded you know, uh, once again, is, is the, uh, the push by the people in 212. They had had enough of the city just disbanding units. Right. They, and they, and they, compromising the fire protection. Right. They all serve the same neighborhood. So now, if this, you know, if you were two blocks from being first due, maybe you were now seven blocks from being first due. And then when they closed that firehouse, maybe now you're 12 blocks from having a fire company. And as we all know in the fire service, you know, time matters. Response but, time's huge. So, uh, you know, yeah, happen. let's go find our last one, which was an uh, engine company turned into a marine company, which was disbanded. We don't know if we'll find out, but we'll look. Engine 232 was originally organized on January 28th, 1898, and went from 232 to 132 a year and change later on October 1st, 1899, and finally back to engine 232 on New Year's Day, 1913. It was originally located at the foot of North 8th Street and the East River, and later moved to the foot of Noble Street and the East River. It was disbanded to create Marine Company 6, as they had already situated at the pier at the base of Noble Street. We are at the foot of Noble Street. Uh, we think that this is the old firehouse. It is the only structure standing here. Uh, it's engine 232, disbanded in 59, and then they opened the Marine Company here in 1962 so we're right by the water and we suspect this to be the old quarters of engine 232 as the address the foot of noble street at the river is the only address given and this is the only structure remaining here and it has some of the qualities of a firehouse and it's got a slip pier here, here. So we will investigate further. So here is the back of what we suspect to be engine 232 before they were disbanded and became Marine 6. And then reopened again with Ladder 176, the Tin House. Be perfect for Marine unit. The City Beautiful movement produced impressive civic architecture and likely influenced the many beautiful historic firehouses around Brooklyn, including the one at 88 India Street in Greenpoint. The former firehouse was built to house what was then Engine Company 115, later 215 of the FDNY. Engine Company 115 went into service as Company 15 originally of the Brooklyn Fire Department in the year 1872 and was reorganized into their new building on the 1st of July of 1910. Brooklyn Engine Company numbers were first changed when Brooklyn was annexed by New York City in 1898, and thus fire companies were integrated with the FDNY in 1899. The second reorganization and renumbering of fire companies came in 1913, as Engine Company 215 was in service until November 25th of 1972. At one time, the firehouse had been scheduled for demolition. However, it was spared by the city and instead auctioned off in 1975 for just a mere $19,600. Prior to being sold at auction, the building was used by the New York City Department of Parks and Recreation for the purpose of storage. Black is 1909. They left that at least, right? Patrick Whitney and Charles Wise were deputy fire commissioners. Chief of the department was Edward Croker. Croker. And is that now, somebody's department right there Alexander, too? Alexander, this is the, the garage. I think uh, they put the warning here, right? Once. Yeah. Because back back there, there's the apartment of our, our landlord. And is that garage open? Second floor. Is that locked? Yeah, that's locked. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. You can come up in my apartment if you want to have a look. But we just, we're looking like like that. That would have been the apparatus flow, you know, yeah. the mm. This is the this is the original staircase. staircase. That was how they were. Yeah. And that's that's where the pole 
to use the, use the slide, slide the pole. Yeah, yeah we still have the holes in all yeah, the yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Are you do? Yeah. Oh, it's just like, I mean, it's sealed for Sealed sure. up, man. Yeah. Now, when this was first built, this was, this was horse it. A team I of horses in here. Yeah. And the stables would be in the back of the building where they kept the horses. And yeah. if they got an alarm, they'd bring the horses out, hook them to the wagon, and they'd respond to the alarm. Yeah, I've seen, I don't know if you, uh, there's one website and they have documentation about this specific building and have the old plans of that building. Yeah, we're, I mean, we got this, you know, to, you know, it just gives you, Look at the, uh, it gives you the history of yeah, yeah. yeah. what was built. This was probably the house in 1872. Right. Yeah. And then oh, it tells oh, you that was, it was an original Brooklyn. I wonder when he bought this building. And years, oh, years later, yeah. it all became a theater uh, wide. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So this, this particular area has a lot of firehouses. Though it looks a lot like a firehouse, it seems a little small to house a fire engine. As it turns out, it was a firehouse built for horse-drawn fire apparatus, which included an 1861 Amoskag second-size steam engine and an 1871 Amoskag four-wheel hose tender. The ground floor housed the engine wagon, hose wagon, stable, and feed room. The dormitory, officer's room, bathroom, and kitchen were located on the second floor. Now the building houses two apartment rental units, including a 1,600 square foot loft with a large closet that was once used for a fire pole. Squad 7 was located at 43 Morgan Avenue. It was originally formed at the quarters of Engine 212 on November the 1st of 1959, then relocated to 43rd Morgan Avenue on July 15th of 1964. Squad 7 was ultimately disbanded on July the 8th, 1966 to organize Engine Company 232 and later moved to the quarters of Engine 231 at 107 Watkins Street. At the time, Squad 7 was doing about 1,600 runs a year and had 156 working firemen. In 1975, they also closed Battalion 36. Now, Battalion 36 was organized at 176 Norman Avenue on April 15th of 1906 at the quarters of originally what was Engine 138. They were promptly relocated to 205 Greenpoint Avenue in 1972 and ultimately disbanded on the 4th of October of 1975. The closings of all these fire companies which left the area of Williamsburg and Greenpoint, Brooklyn with very scarce fire protection is what created the perfect storm for the people to push back against the city. And push back is exactly what they did. The attempted closing of Engine 212 was ultimately the last straw. The community had had enough. Like the other firehouses in that area, Engine 212 was organized on September 15, 1869, later changed to Engine 12 on January 28th of 1898, then Engine 112 on June 1st of 1908, and finally back to Engine 212 on New Year's Day, 1913. In November of 1975, the city announced that it would shut down Engine Company 212, a fire station in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. The historical firehouse on Wythe Avenue was built in 1869, and it was a key fixture in the community. To many local residents, the firehouse was an essential public service that protected the neighborhood from problems of neglect and arson that made the other boroughs dangerous. Residents strongly opposed the closing of the firehouse because the neighborhood contained many wood frame buildings, and the city at the time was plagued by fires. Old wooden homes were also in close proximity to factories and the sites of what was chemical storage. The night before Thanksgiving, the city set the firehouse to close at the end of that day's shift. One of the firemen who was opposed to the closing of the station continued to ring the air raid siren to attract people to the firehouse. The local residents flocked to the fire station to protest its closing. By the time city officials came to remove the fire truck from Engine Company 212, more than 200 protesters had congregated on the street. When firemen inside opened the doors at 6 p.m., the neighborhood stormed inside the firehouse and prevented the firemen and the engine from leaving the firehouse. By 9 p.m. of that same night, the protesters released the firemen, but refused to leave the firehouse or let the fire engines be driven away in order to force the city to listen to their demands. The city ordered police to forcibly remove the protesters, but the battalion chief of the 11th Division refused, saying, we're not going to remove them. It's the people's firehouse. The name caught on, and the campaign came to be known as the fight to save the people's firehouse. Groups of protesters lived in this fire station and organized a system to sleep and eat there. Organizers Adam Vanesky, a local grocer and activist, and Jeff Pulaski, an injured factory worker that had been laid off, created shifts for Northsiders to occupy the firehouse for 24 hours every day. Protesters held meetings for the community every Tuesday night, 
and attracted many activists to join and meet there. Protesters vowed to stay at the firehouse until the station reopened. During the sit-in, supporters included the Boy Scouts, the elderly, and entire families who would rotate shifts on the mattresses to block any attempts to remove the protesters from the firehouse. The diversity of support that the campaign received allowed it to prevent opponents from discrediting the protesters' demands, even though one city official called the campaigners communist. After a 16-month occupation, the firehouse was reopened and recommissioned as Utility Unit 1. As a utility unit, the company could only respond to fires in its immediate vicinity, but was unable to serve the whole community. The neighborhood would occupy the firehouse again in 1991 for a year to upgrade the utility unit to a fully functional engine company. The campaign inspired the creation of People's Firehouse Inc., or PFI, a civilian advocacy group for firefighters. Its mission was to preserve Engine 212 and it worked in affordable housing development as well as social and legal tenant services, education, and vocational training, and energy conservation programs in Williamsburg. However, the firehouse would finally be closed in 2003 as a result of another round of budget cuts. There are plans to restore the old firehouse and create North Brooklyn Town Hall and Community and Cultural Center, or NTHCCC, which would be a public meeting space for arts and performances as well as a space for community organization. As of today, however, the firehouse still sits abandoned and in decay. All right, guys, we are out with uh, Captain Jimmy Graham and senior dude Hank Molay. We're here at Engine 212, the People's Firehouse, established in 1869 on 136th Wythe. So tell us a little about uh, 212, Hank. Well, I believe uh, this is the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. And uh, a little history, I guess, you, you said when it had started, uh, during its history, it also had a, uh, let's see, Squad 7 was in quarters with Engine 212 from, uh, let's see, December of 1959 to July of 1964. Uh, then this became the People's Firehouse when it was disbanded in July of 1975. Um, and I guess the community kept fighting. It got reorganized June 17th of 1978, where uh, it stayed in service until May of May 25th of 2003, when it was totally disbanded. And I believe, uh, Captain Graham, did you uh, work a tour? I worked one or two tours here in 212, uh, back in the day. And they, when they closed 212, they also closed Engine 209, which in quarters with us in Ladder 102. Uh, that was during the Bloomberg administration, 204, uh, 261, I believe, in Queens. It was a sad day for the job when they closed the, the budget cuts. They, you know, closed all these years. Uh, you know, it was after 9/11. The morale was uh, challenged at that point, and uh, that was just throwing some more gas on the fire, shall we say, when they closed these companies. It was a very sad time for the job. As you can see, it's been empty for quite some time. What year, Hank? 80, I mean, 90. 2003 was the, 2003 was so the final time that the May doors 20, closed. May 25th, 2003 was when they were disbanded. It uh, was just 20 years ago this past week. Yeah, and you can see uh, the windows are still open in there. It's probably a mess in there. Uh, we're going to try to get in. We're going to go around the back and see if we can actually get into this joint. We don't even know if the city still owns this. I mean, these, you know, there's a lot of history in these buildings. It's a shame to let them deteriorate. Hey, man. 1869, that's a long time, like it says on the door. So let's walk around and see if we Armor Tough interlocking floor tiles are the best choice to replace new or aging, stained, or cracked concrete or epoxy floors. Here's why. Armor Tough tiles come with a lifetime warranty and are usually installed in one or two days, depending on the size of your station, with virtually no disruption in daily operation. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are guaranteed from chipping, cracking, peeling, breaking, or staining. Once installed, the tiles are non skid and non slip and meet the ADA standards for the friction coefficient. The tiles are stain resistant and impervious to any chemicals or volatiles that are used in the fire service. Once installed, your floor will be easy to clean with just soap and water. Install an Armor Tough tile floor in your apparatus bays, offices, training rooms, workshops, 
exercise rooms, kitchens, banquet halls, or any other room in your station. Call Vince today for a no-obligation quote at 908-917-7697. Why install a breakable epoxy floor that will need replacing in 5 to 10 years when you could have a floor that will last a lifetime? Drop a halligan on an Armor Tough floor and you won't see any damage. Don't try this with concrete or epoxy. Join the hundreds of career and volunteer fire departments nationwide who have chosen an Armor Tough interlocking tile floor. Armor Tough interlocking tiles are half the price of epoxy and will last a lifetime without issue. Again, call Vince today for a no obligation quote at 908 917 7697. The First Responders Center for Excellence is a not for profit organization dedicated to protecting the lives and livelihoods of first responders. Their education and research initiatives aim to bring greater awareness and understanding to the challenges to the health, safety, and well being of firefighters, EMS personnel, and other first responders, too. They are an affiliate of the National Fallen Firefighter Foundation. And today's health and safety tip is to please remember to shower within an hour after fighting a fire. Although the salty look is cool, it's not so cool when you're later on battling tough diseases such as cancer. So in order to get all that contaminated stuff off your person, please, as soon as you can, hit the showers so that later on you're not feeling sour.